Redeeming blood has been my theme and shall be till I die. Oh, that's so good. The blood of Jesus Christ. We just got done talking in our membership class uh, just a little bit about what makes us family, church family, the family of, of God, the believers of Jesus Christ, and it's the shed blood of Jesus Christ. So good. It ties us together. And the blood of Jesus Christ is stronger than anything that ties anybody together in this world. Amen? Amen. We're going to start our service off today, or our sermon off today, uh, with a testimony. Uh, Trevor is going to come and share. Is this on? Huh? You don't, okay. You don't want to. All right. Ruin my plan. That's all right. Whatever you want to do, man. I feel like a preacher up here or something. <laughs> Amen. I, uh, I just was thinking that song, How He Knows Our Name, and it just blows me away every time I hear that song, and it's just good music. Um, I walked in this morning, and RJ, I said to him, I said, are you going to use this Bible verse? And he says, no, go ahead. He says, it's actually on the bulletin, and I didn't even know it was on the bulletin, so that's God at work already. But um, each of you, sh- it's in First uh, Peter 4.10, each of you should use whatever gift you have received to serve others as faithful stewards of God's grace in its various forms. And I'll admit that before we got here, we weren't really as involved as we are once we've gotten to this church, and God started to show me things that we could do. I mean, first thing, you got the bass guitar and wanted somebody to play, and I thought, well, I'll try to learn it. (laughs) So, and, um, And I see Chloe learning to play a lot of instruments, and she comes up here and plays, and I see it in my family with Tammy, and she, she teaches class, and is a wonderful teacher with kids. And seeing God start to move and just bless our lives even more. Um, I know at one point, I was, we were going to go play at another church, and I felt like backing out because it didn't feel like, um, like we said this morning, we were in a verse this morning, it said, we see ourselves as little in our own eyes, we don't see us as God sees us. And... Um, I didn't get to the practice. I decided I was going to go deer hunting because that's another passion I have. <laughs> and <laughs> can't you tell by the shirt? <laughs> so um, Sunday rolled around. It was that night we were supposed to go play. And, and I started feeling God working on me. And RJ was working on me too a little bit. He's kind of getting on me. So um, <laughs> another verse that God showed me that I've heard before was in Hebrews 10:38, And it says, but my righteous one will live by faith. And I take no pleasure in the one that shrinks back. So I felt like I was shrinking back, and I stepped forward and, and did that. And later in the week, that was the week leading up to Thanksgiving, I went hunting one more time before the rain came on Thursday on Thanksgiving. And uh, that day, three deer actually walked by my stand within an hour, and they all three got an arrow stuck in them. <laughs> Praise God. <laughs> that, was a, that was a God thing for me, because I've never seen that happen before. It only happened to one other person I know. So... Um, but yeah, God is on the move in this church. I've seen a lot of people stepping into their gifts and things that are going on. And I'm telling you that God is, is going to bless all our families and this church the more we step out and, and uh, leap of faith. Oh, That's right. There. Leap of, take that leap of faith and find your gift where God wants you and, and get into that groove. Man, Man. Thank you, Trevor. Uh, I asked him uh, actually just on Friday uh, if he would testify We're talking about the gifts that God has given us. Um, We're talking about, and and the gifts are uh, the the big three, time, talent, and treasure. Last week we talked about time. What do we do with the time that God has given us, and how are we using that? Whether it's a day-by-day thing, or it's the whole whole life, the expanse of your life, the, the 50 or 80 or 100 years that you have on this earth, what are you doing with that to glorify God? We talked about that last week. Today we're going to talk about the gifts talents that God has given us. What are you doing with your talents to glorify God? And I talked to Trevor. Trevor and I have talked uh, several times about this topic. Um, he, played, he played an instrument when you were younger, right? Like you played, you played trombone. God's, God's greatest gift to the music industry is the trombone. Um, and uh, uh, so, so he had some musical so I said, hey man, why don't you play some bass guitar for me? He never, never really picked up one. And he, and he took it, and he's run with it, and he, man, you probably, you, 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 you showed up with bloody fingers before, because you, you just practiced that thing to the bone, and that's awesome, and God, God called you to do that. Um, it was, there was an invitation given, and, you, and I'm sure you prayed about it, um, and God led you to say yes, and you've done it, and it's been huge. Uh, I hope you enjoy the, the worship that we have um, on Sunday mornings, and that's... 
Absolutely, and that's absolutely true. And 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 and, and he's right. Chloe has stepped up and done uh, guitar and and drums and 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 piano. Uh, Dorothy and Ellen on piano, the singers, um, all good things. Bree on the drums when she's here or guitar. Uh, God uses those talents, and that's a great thing. Did you guys know that there's other talents that God gives besides musical abilities? Okay. <laughs> Um, so if you are not musically inclined, it does not mean that God has not gifted you with something. And, and so what I want to do today, um, a little bit first before I get any, anything else, is I kind of want to have a little testimony time. Uh, and, and I haven't asked anybody else to testify. But I'm wondering if there's anybody out here who has seen somebody else use their talents to advance the kingdom of God in Davis County, in the community, at jobs, anything like that. Has anybody seen that happen from anybody else in here and would be willing to share anything like that? I know there are. Don't be shy. Come on. Steve. Yeah. Amen. 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 Yep. That's right. Our personal faith in Christ is not a private faith. Our personal faith needs to be a public faith. And we live our life for Jesus out there in the world. Great testimony. Thank you. And now he's talking about Bob Riley back there who's an office manager, or not a produce manager at Hy-Vee uh, up in Ottumwa. Does a great job. He has a great attitude when he's there. Tremendous. Who else? Something that you've seen somebody do. Carol. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Good. Amen. Amen. Somebody else. What have you seen people do, Chris? Amen. Um, to see that number of kids that were able to come and, and the passion that, that all of the, the teachers and everybody in the DBS had. Amen. Uh, just a great Organizational skills, absolutely. That's huge. I'm not one with organizational skills, as my wife would attest. And if you walked in my office, you could see that. Uh, but we need people like that. Amen? People behind the scenes who... who and I was talking to Bill just this morning. I think it was Bill I was talking to. You, you, we we want to recognize people that, that do good things, but a lot of times there's not a lot of credit to be shown or a lot of uh, appreciation shown to behind-the-scenes stuff. And that's what I want to take time today to recognize as we watch people do that. I'll, I'll testify. I watch every, every Thursday. I sit here in my office, 2 o'clock, clockwork. Carol, Tate, or Carol Wixom walks in, and she's ready to clean this place. That's, it's an amazing uh, thing that, that, that she does um, and takes care of, uh, and, it's, and it's, uh, it's clockwork. Two o'clock, Thursday, Carol Wixom, in the door. And it's awesome. And I love, I love being able to chat with her and talk with her, but she does a great job. And she doesn't get recognized nearly enough for it. There you go. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, Trevor. Well, I'm also excited about some of the young people are going to step up and do Yeah, church. absolutely. And also, you said something about the treasury position that I do, mm-hmm. and that's more of a miracle. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. If you didn't hear that, uh, Carol Wixom used to be our treasurer, and, and Trevor took over this year. Uh, he's got, and that's another skill, he's got office management skills. He does stuff with the hospital for his job, and he's took over, and he said, Carol, Carol prays for him. Uh, and she's told him that she prays for him, and that's, that's awesome. That's so good. Anybody else? What else, what else have you seen happening in this church? Yes, Callie. Amen. Amen. Yeah, we got caravan workers, uh, Jen Shoemaker, Christy, uh, Ellen, and Tammy. Great, great caravan workers. Do a great job. Kids are coming. We've got, we've got 25 kids that come on Wednesday nights now. Two years ago, we had zero kids. 
right? Little, we, had, we had maybe one or two kids that came sporadically. Now we have 25 kids in here. Look at how many kids are running around this place now. God is using your abilities to grow things in this church, and not just for the sake of this church, but for the advancement of his kingdom, amen? And so people come to know Jesus Christ, and it, for whatever silly reason God decided, he decides to use us. Us failing, awful, silly human beings, God is perfect, and he decides to use us as imperfect tools to do a job that is so important. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. It does take a lot. Uh, Bill runs back there. Gordon with the, with the video camera when we do that kind of stuff, and he helps with the soundboard back there. Adam on there. Uh, and, and, and I didn't tell him I was going to do this, but uh, uh, we got a brand new computer back there in the sound booth today, just today for the first day. Adam and, and Marcy provided that for the church, and that's just a tremendous, tremendous blessing. Uh, that computer probably had crashed uh, twice already and was on the verge of going to do it again and again and again because uh, it was, what, like, I don't know, seven years old? Isn't that, like, ancient in computer age? Uh, so Adam, Adam uh, is phenomenal with his knowledge, and he gives that knowledge to the church, to God, and it's used. Absolutely. Give him a round of applause. The... Anybody else? I'll, Gordon, Gordon drives a van every single Sunday and Wednesday. Awesome. Chris helps in times with that. Awesome stuff. Dorothy, what were you going to say? I was going to say, Gordon drives the van, and that's the first ministry in Africa. Yep. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Absolutely. When you have a passion for something, oh, God, God will use that so hard. It's awesome. We had a greeters meeting yesterday. Sorry, go ahead, Ellen. I'll, Absolutely. Absolutely. Anybody else seen something happen? Yes, Carol. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Children are the stars of the show. But if, if, if we just put the children up to their own devices, it ain't going to be so good. We got to have some adults that put the work and the time and the effort in to mold to craft that together. And so the people that, that taught the kids the songs, that taught the kids their lines, that, that put together the stage, you know, the things that were built for that, um, just a tremendous, tremendous blessing. God uses your gifts to be able to do things in the church. And my question to you today is what are you using your specific gifts for, for God's specific purpose in your life, to reach maybe even a specific person that God places on your heart? You see, God, God doesn't give us these things. He doesn't give us a musical ability. He doesn't give us a, an ability to stand before people and speak. Some people out there have a, a great ability to do that. Some people have a great ability to be able to put uh, parties together, plan events, and do that. Judy is great at putting things together and getting everything organized the way that it needs to be done. That's a skill, Right? And if we don't have somebody doing that, things fall apart and we don't get to participate in what God wants to do in our community. We've got to have all these different things lining up that people step in and do that. If we didn't have someone clean this place, you guys probably wouldn't be here right now. You'd, be, you'd walk out the door because it's not well kept up. God has gifted people to do those things. And it's so important that we take advantage of it and it's so important that we take a look at what God has given us to be given back to him. We talked about last week when we talked about the time that God has given us or anything that God has given us, it's not ours. It's not our own, right? It was given to us to be used for a purpose. Now, in America, we talk a lot about our rights. This is my right to have this. This is my right to keep this. This is my right to do what I want to do. And I'm here to tell you that it's not a Christian mentality. American Christianity gets things wrong a lot of the time. And we have got to have a Jesus mentality that says, whatever I have been given that I am a steward of is God's 
first and foremost. And whatever he wants me to do with it, I am going to say yes to that. Wants me to sing? Yes. Wants me to vacuum the carpet? Yes. Wants me to wash the windows? I'm going to ask my wife. Okay? (laughs) You don't want me to do the windows. Okay? Now, if God wants me to, okay. It's so important, so important, that what he gives us, we give back to him. I'm going to read the passage of scripture. Uh, Bill, if you want to put that up on the screen. Uh, Same one we did last week. Luke chapter 19. If you want to turn there. And we're going to look at this one next week as well. Same passage of scripture because it applies to all that we're talking about. Luke chapter 19, verse 11. Up there. While they were listening to this, remember he had just come from Zacchaeus' house. While they were listening to this, Jesus went on to tell them a parable. Because he was near Jerusalem and the people thought that the kingdom of God was going to appear at once. He said a man of noble birth went to a distant country to have himself appointed king and then to return. So he called ten of his servants and he gave them ten minas. Put this money, back to, or put this money to work, he said, until I come back. But his subject Subjects hated him and sent a delegation after him to say, We don't want this man to be our king. He was made king, however, and returned home. Then he sent for the servants to whom he had given the money in order to find out what they had gained with it. Important word there, gained. The first one came and said, Sir, your minus has earned ten more. Well done, my good servant, his master replied, because you have been trustworthy in a very small matter. Take charge of ten cities. The second came and said, Sir, your mina has earned five more. And his master answered, You take charge of five cities. Then another servant came and said, Sir, here is your mina. I have kept it laid away in a piece of cloth. I was afraid of you because you are a hard man. You take out what you did not put in, and you reap what you did not sow. His master replied, I will judge you by your own words, you wicked servant. You knew, did you, that I am a hard man, taking out what I did not put in and, repla- and reaping what I did not sow? Why then didn't you put my money on deposit so that when I came back, I could have collected it with interest? Then he said to those standing by, take his mina away from him and give it to the one who has ten minas. Sir, they said, he already has ten. He replied, I tell you that to everyone who has, more will be given. But as for the one who has nothing, even what they have will be taken away. But those enemies of mine who did not want me to be king over them, bring them here and kill them in front of me. Again, I can't get over the fact that's a harsh, harsh passage of Scripture. Jesus is saying what the kingdom of heaven is going to be like. And, And we believe as Christ followers now, with the Holy Spirit inside of us, we can enjoy the kingdom of heaven here on earth right now, right? It's not perfect. Jesus hasn't come back to redeem it yet. He hasn't redeemed the earth yet. But yet the Holy Spirit lives inside of us. And so wherever we go, the Holy Spirit is with us. Right? The Holy Spirit goes with us wherever we go if we have him inside of us. And that is a reflection of the kingdom of God. So here in his passage, in this parable, he gives each servant one mina. And he says, go and gain something with this. He came back to see what they had gained. And if you look at the, 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 the replies from the first two servants, they say, Master, here is your minas. Right? I have earned, your, your mina has earned ten more. Not mine, not my mina that you gave me. You gave it to me, but it's still yours. Your mina has earned ten more. And he's ready to give it back. And the, and, and the master says, go take care of ten cities. You get more because you were faithful in this small thing. You see, the gifts that God has given us, they're not always these huge, grand opportunities sometimes they're very small sometimes it's the the neighbor next door who needs help shoveling the driveway sometimes it's the person that you're sitting next to at work maybe they don't have enough money to buy lunch that day maybe it's the person that you see walking down the road carrying a couple of bags of clothes and they need a ride somewhere Maybe it's the fact that we have something that we want to do here through the church, through God's local church, and we want to reach people, and you've got the ability to put those things in motion. But what you also have is the ability to, as Trevor talked about, shrink back. 
to step away from what God has led you to. You see, you're here in this building. You're a part of this church, members of this church, even some of you. And God has called you to be a part of this church in a way that builds more and more people up. We wouldn't have some of you here if we hadn't done vacation Bible schools. We wouldn't have some of you here if we didn't have someone driving the van to go and pick you up. We wouldn't have some of you here if we hadn't put together a kids program on Wednesday night. You see, God uses all those things outside of Sunday morning church. Okay, People who don't go to church, they're not going to come to church on Sunday morning. But they will be involved with people who take the gifts and the skills and the, the, the personalities that God has blessed you with to be able to go out there and find ways to reach other people. How are you using God's gifts to you? First Peter chapter 4, Trevor already read one verse from there. I'm going to read a couple other ones. First Peter chapter 4, starting with verse 8. Small Bibles, I'm going to pass it. There we go. First Peter chapter 4. Above all, love each other deeply, because love covers over a multitude of sins. I love that verse. Offer hospitality to one another without grumbling. Hospitality is a gift. Okay? Each of you should use whatever gift you have received to serve others as faithful stewards of God's grace in its various forms. The gifts that God has given you are various forms. Each one's going to look a little different. Each one's going to be presented in a different way. Each one of you has an opportunity that I don't have to reach someone else for Jesus Christ. Whatever form that God has given you to show his grace, I'm asking you to use it. I'm asking you to use it for the advancement of his kingdom through the work of this church. Okay, if you, especially if you are a member of this church, and I want to call everybody to think about that if you are not. God has got to get a hold of people in this community and do something awesome in this place. Going on, if anyone speaks, they should do so as one who speaks the very words of God. If anyone serves, they should do so with the strength God provides, so that in all things God may be praised through Jesus Christ. To him be the glory and power forever and ever. Amen. If anyone serves, they should do so with the strength God provides. Anyone ever tried to do something at the church, in the church, with the church, and you just, your heart wasn't in it? Have you ever been there? I have. Tons of times. Okay? I wasn't depending on the strength of God to carry me through whatever event or thing was going on, whether it was a church service, whether it was a, a, some sort of community event or something, and it falls flat. God is showing us here that when you serve, use the strength of God to take that thing that he has given you and then you get to watch it explode because God's going to be the one that does the work. You've got to be faithful to take that step and go and do that. Taking a leap of faith in the abilities that God has given you to be used in the church. The gifts that you have, the talents that you have are not for your own using, for your own purposes and glory. I promise you, that if you use your talents for God, he is going to bless that. He's going to bless your life. He's going to increase things in your life. But you've got to take that first step and give it to him. And let him use it and grow it because it's his strength that does it through you. It's a good, good thing. I want you to think about all the things that you see. We're going to wrap up here in just a second. Think about all the things that you see that happen in this church or in other churches that you've been a part of. I want you to start thinking about the way that you could be used in this place. We're going to have uh, two ministries going on tomorrow night. We're going to be serving food from 5 to 7. And we're going to open up our clothes closet again from 6 to 8. We've got a lot of people that show up in need. Wanting to be taken care of. Needing to be taken care of. And the Church of the Nazarene is a missional church. We are on mission to serve those who are in need. Do you have something that you can offer there? We've got... Uh, children's programs. And I'm going to tell you one thing right now. We've got, was there, one, two, three, four, five, six. We've got several other teenagers um, who may not be here right now. We've got about seven or eight regular attending teenagers in this church. Uh, Tammy, how many fifth graders you got on Wednesday night? Oh my goodness. Uh, anywhere from eight to 
So if we had eight to ten more teenagers in two years, we're going to have close to 15 to 20 teenagers being run by volunteers in this church. That's going to be a hard thing. We're going to need some help. And if you want to step in in two years without any training, without getting involved first and say, I'll, I'll wait till the two years comes in and I'll jump right in. I'm telling you what, it ain't going to work. I want to get you going right now. Start to learn these kids. Start to get to know these third, fourth, fifth graders and then be ready for when these teenagers start coming in. We don't have any of these. Te- our oldest teenager is what, ninth grade? We still got three more years with our oldest teenager before we lose any of them to college. God is, wants to use us right now. What are you doing? What can you do? Teenager groups, children's groups, teaching Sunday school class. Greeters. We had a greeting ministry yesterday, greeting, greeting ministry team meeting yesterday. God's doing good things. Visitations at people's homes, hospital visitations. I was talking to the greeting team yesterday. People expect the pastor to show up. They're in the hospital. A lot of times you're, you, you expect the pastor to show up. It's his job. It's his duty. Okay. I promise you I come out of love. Okay, I'm not doing it out of just a duty. I promise I want to come see you. But what about when that next person shows up that they weren't expecting? The pastor's expected. What about that next person who shows up? Because you've got a gift to be able to talk with people and show people how much you love and care about them. God wants to use you to grow the amount of love and unity that we have going on right now in our church. What are you doing? Are you doing something already? Great. What more can you do? I'm going to keep calling on us to do more because God wants to reach more people. Do you have a heart? And we, we, we read on Romans uh, Wednesday night that Paul aches for his people, for the people of Jerusalem, because they have not come to know Jesus Christ. They have passed him off as not the Messiah. And he is yearning for them to come to know Jesus. How desperately do you want your neighbors, your coworkers, your family members to know Jesus Christ. Our work here is not done. We must continue to use the gifts that God has given us to advance his kingdom. We are doing a great job. All the testimonies that we shared today, definitely applaud those. Continue to, 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 to notice those things, to acknowledge and to uh, praise those people that are doing things like that. But ask yourself, What else? What else does God have for me? And we will watch this place be a place where people are saved. I don't care how many seats we fill. I care about filling these altars with people who are giving their hearts over to Jesus Christ. I want to see teenagers at this altar. I want to see kids at this altar. I want to see grandparents at this altar bowing their lives, yielding, submitting, surrendering their lives before Jesus Christ because of the gifts that he gave us to bring those people here. Amen? Amen. Let's stand together. We're going to have a word of prayer. God is good. Amen? Amen. Heavenly Father, thank you for this day. Thank you for this parable, this teaching that what you have given us, we are to use to gain more people for you. Heavenly Father, we know that you can do all things, but you choose to do all things through us because of Jesus Christ who gives us strength. Lord God, continue to use us. Continue to, to call us to do more for you. Lord God, let us not be complacent in where we are at right now, but let us be drawn into acts of service for you and your church. In your name we pray. Amen. Have a great day, everybody.